So many of our pedals now come in stereo, but can you really tell the difference between mono and stereo? In this video, I give the case for guitar in mono. Hello and welcome to the video. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Justin and I'm all about worship guitar, helping you sound and play your best for Jesus. Please consider heading on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page to download my patches and more to support these videos and my ministry. If you've met before, welcome back. The zeitgeist of our time seems to be this, go stereo or go home. Our favorite pedal companies make stereo capable pedals. We can quote our favorite guitar players who discuss the benefits of going stereo and the wonders it does to our tone. This video isn't going to bash your favorite guitar player for saying that. I myself have said that stereo is better if you think it's worth the extra effort. My goal today is to present the opposite side of the argument and give you some perspective as to going stereo. They come with additional costs to your setup, some technical challenges that you have to overcome, and you may not notice it live after all. For every pedal that you want to go stereo with, you need to add an extra patch cable. That doesn't seem so big a problem until you want your whole wet section to go stereo. That one stereo chorus, two delays and two reverbs will need five extra patch cables. Does your pedal board have the routing space for those extra patch cables? Can you afford those extra patch cables? These are important questions to ask yourself. The issue is compounded when we consider that stereo-ready pedals cost more in a ballpark of $50 and upwards. Taking our previous example of a wet section consisting of five pedals, we're talking about $250 difference between mono and stereo. So perhaps we need to weigh the difference between stereo or a brand new pedal. It's all well and good if you have stereo capabilities, but can the venue you're playing at take your stereo setup? For most of us, that's church, and if I'm reading the worship leader forums right, most churches regard the electric guitar as a mono instrument, so no stereo ins. Why? Because for the most part, church worship team budgets account for one guitar amp, just like how they account for one bass amp, unless you're on the leadership board and can give perspective as to why you need two amps on stage. Then there's duplicating the cable runs and the microphone setups to accommodate two amps, all additional costs that you or the church will have to bear. Even if you go ambulance with a model to avoid these setup issues, there's the issue of channel assignments on the mixer side of the sound system. There might be a lot of bending over backwards just to accommodate stereo guitar. Your sound crew will have to wire the additional input to the spare channel if they even have one. Your in-ear monitor engineer will have to reroute and pan the electric guitar rig in stereo. On top of all that, if your sound system is wired to be dual mono instead of true stereo, having two inputs from your stereo rig is not going to make a difference anyway. After spending the money and fighting with your sound man, at the end of the day, you may not even notice the difference between mono or stereo patches live. Here, we have to recognize that different listening environments lead to different perceptions of tone. Try this out on your Helix or M model if you can. Listen to a purely mono rig on your headphones and then try the same rig but listen to it from a pair of speakers. The mono rig may sound quite lifeless when on headphones. On headphones, your acoustic space is isolated and the 3D space isn't there. But it's quite a different experience when listening on live speakers. Think about it. You have two speakers set apart by a certain distance in a 3D acoustic space, which leads to perceiving the audio in stereo. 
as we do with all sounds in real life. Additionally, there's the issue of sound design in your modular. Units like the Helix have mono and stereo versions of the same effect. True stereo has two facets of tone the middle information and the side information that fills up the left and right sides of the stereo spectrum. Many delay and reverb algorithms rely on the side information for processing, and so when you choose the mono delay and reverb version, you may lose up to two-thirds of the perceived depth and space in comparison to its stereo counterpart. This is why some delay and reverb disappear when you switch to mono and listen through headphones. But on live speakers, the 3D aspect of audio comes back. Even though the perceived delay and reverb is lower because that stereo side information isn't there from the delay and reverb, some liveliness of tone comes back into the sound. So in sum, the questions you need to answer are as follows. Can I afford to go stereo? Is my AV crew okay with mixing my guitar in stereo? Can my sound system accommodate stereo guitar? And will my efforts pay off even though live sound perception minimizes the difference between mono and stereo? If your answers to the questions above are yes, good for you. You are truly blessed. If not, I have a proposed solution which will help you tweak your monotone, particularly as it applies to Line 6 modelers. This solution is based on a patch that I'm updating Helix Pack with and will be available as a free update for those who purchased it before, the full stereo patch. A disclaimer, what I'm about to share with you is with regards to preparing a tone for a live sound system. I know most of you folks who have modelers likely have in-ear monitoring systems too, which is a whole different ballgame. The tones you'll be hearing today are from this full stereo patch that is mostly in mono except for the last block in the chain a dual delay that I've set up as a dedicated Haas effect. As explained in my other videos, I use this to help create a wide stereo image by delaying the left side of the signal between 9 to 15 milliseconds. To our ears, we perceive this tiny shift as essentially the same sound but wider in stereo width and depth. How does this help create better mono patches? This next bit actually comes from a practice I've adopted when mixing audio projects. When mixing, it's important to listen to the mix in both stereo and mono as many live sound venues may not have true stereo systems. If you can fix the problems in the mix in mono, the mix will sound much better when in stereo. We're going the opposite direction here. We'll start with building an all mono signal path, including delay and reverb. The goal here is to treat the mono delay and reverb to the best that you can in mono, then check how it might sound in a live environment with its physical speakers set some distance apart. For delays, watch out for the models that have modulation effects like chorusing or phasing on the repeats. You could run into phase issues because they're in mono. My advice is to turn those parameters down or completely off if you can. For reverbs, the muddiness in mono can come from either an accumulation of low end or the modulation inherent in the model. My advice is to turn up the low pass control and set the high pass higher than usual. This will end up with a brighter reverb that is clearer and cleaner. Like the delay models, I recommend turning down modulation parameters if you can so that you won't run into phase issues. signal path can take it, you can do two more things. Firstly, you can create an AB split path that functions as a wet effects blend. On my patch, I set this to 60-40 or 55-45 in favor of the dry signal so that you can hear the wet effects but still have clarity from the dry, unaffected signal. You could also place an EQ block after the wet section to clean up any muddy low end as well as to accentuate the high end to make the reverb pop. this is done, use the harsh effect block to check how your patch might sound like over a live sound system. I guarantee you, the patch will sound better due to our perception of stereo audio. Thank you.
So the big takeaway to keep in mind is that if your goal is to be 100% satisfied with your tone, you only need to reach 80% satisfaction from dialing in mono. Turning on the house effect will reclaim that remaining 20% to check how it sounds like live. If you follow these steps, I believe your all mono patch is ready for the stage. Which brings us to today's bonus and question of the day. I've recently repackaged my Helix tones into one big signature Helix pack. It was previously called The Road Less Travel, which is an anti-skeptic reference for one of my favorite bands. I love experimenting with not conventional amp tones, effects, and use case scenarios. So if you're in the market for something different for the Sunday service, please check out my signature Helix pack. Today's tones will be part of that pack, so you can purchase the road that's travel, this patch is a free update. Question of the day, is your rig in mono or stereo and how have you been dealing with situations where the venue can only accommodate mono? I'd love to hear your ideas and thoughts in the comment section below. That's it for me, thanks for watching this video. If you've gotten value out of it, like it and share it with someone who you know is interested in dialing in mono tones. Until next time, I'm Justin and I'm all about worship the time.